Hello everybody, this is Jim Samard with Care Printing. I've been authorized by ClearProp TV's Paramotor podcast to edit this week's show and rebroadcast it for you. In this edit, I endeavor to focus on the guest, their story, and what they have to say. I hope you enjoy the show and find it informative. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Simply ask them in the comment section down below and I'll get to them. Oh, one more thing. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I plan on doing this on a regular basis for you. Enjoy the show. If you want to be on the show, make sure you get up with Linda Anderson. She's our PR girl. Go to ParamomUSA.com. It forwards over to her Facebook page. You just PM her and say, hey, I want to be on the show. And she'll That's hook right. you up. She'll hook you up. Right. Thank you so much, Linda, for being on the show. Yeah. We also got Jim from Canada, eh? The only guy I know that has maple syrup smelling money. What's up, buddy? <laughs> it's doing well, thank you. Well, it's always good to see you, bud. And uh, the question that I always ask you is, what flight are you on this week? 118. 118. That's yeah. awesome. That is so awesome. And you also uh, print out uh, decals, which you guys call decals. You have uh, stickers and all sorts of stuff. Uh, the the paramotorcalendar.com you do, and you helped us out a lot. And how do we get up with you? If we want to make stickers or calendars or stuff on our own, we ask you, and how do we get up with you? You can reach me through carepp.com, and I'd be happy to help you out. Awesome. And he also flies, too. So if you want to watch his crazy shenanigans, go to carepppg.com. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for being here. We also have a guest, uh, Jim. Um, there's the, the guest here is someone you know by heart, right? Who Who is our guest tonight? This is my instructor, Aaron Hackle from ExploreSportsPPGSchool.ca. Awesome. Well, Perfect. welcome, welcome, Aaron, uh, to our show. Uh, you are the instructor that helped Jim get up in the air. That's awesome. We definitely appreciate you. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us, Sean. Really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely, buddy. Well, we talked a lot over the pre-show. You're going to be giving away some stuff. So you guys in the chat, if you're listening, make sure you say hello so we can uh, see that you're here because we're going to be giving away some cool stuff uh, in one hour. So make sure you stay here for the entire hour at eight o'clock. We're going to be giving away some cool stuff. So don't go nowhere. Aaron, you've been flying uh, paramotors for a while. You're an instructor. You have schools everywhere. Uh, it, it sounds absolutely amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into paramotors and starting up this school? Yeah, no, thanks for the opportunity again, Sean. Um, so I guess it goes back about uh, nearly a decade now. And uh, like everybody, I think uh, when we start as a, a paramotor instructor, everybody has a little family life and full-time jobs and all that type of jazz. And uh, I always had a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit. So while I was working my corporate job for about 18 years, working as an advertising consultant at the Daily Paper, I had started a, a company nearly two decades ago called Explore Kiteboarding. And we really concentrated on just teaching people how to kiteboard. And then in 2008, we decided to change the name from Explore Kiteboarding to Explore Sports to encompass all of the other activities that we started getting into, stand-up paddle boards, one wheeling when they came in, and a bunch of other alternative activities like one wheels, or sorry, not one wheels, but uh, unicycles and all that kind of jazz. Then in, oh, I was going to say about 2015, and I need to back up here. So when I started Paramotor, Paramotor, I wasn't planning to teach at all. Paramotor was going to be just my pastime, and I was just going to have fun with it, and I didn't need any other main source of income. Then in 2015, as the industry changed in corporate working in newspapers, uh, I ended up getting my package like so many people else did in North America and I needed something to do with my life. So I took my package and I worked in, in Canada. It's run a little bit different uh, uh, being a flight instructor than it is in the US. So it took about three years to achieve all of the 
designations uh, underneath Transport Canada, uh, upgrading our medicals and uh, having our in-flight instruction and actually having to travel for in-flight instruction, as well as the, the multiple, ex multiple exams that we needed to achieve with a, a 90% uh, pass mark uh, in order to achieve our flight instructor status. So it took about three years to achieve all of those designations and um, and knowing all of the kiteboarding relationships that have built across Canada over the last two decades after running a couple of cool kiteboarding events uh, even one uh, sponsored by Red Bull um, I met a lot of uh, different instructors from across Canada so I use those kiteboarding in uh, instructors and those relationships to cross train them uh, into paramotor and it's a perfect alternative for us kiteboarders because on windy days we go kite and we teach kiteboarding and then on those calm days we're always in there what do you want to do and we always have a love for living life and paramotor just brought that right into fulfilling that need of a living in uh, in zen so uh, after three years of uh, of running the or traveling right across canada um and teaming up with a bunch of kiteboarding instructors and cross training them, we decided to open up uh, ground handling ground handling facilities in a bunch of different provinces, and um, Transport Canada in Canada or, sorry Transport Canada requires a minimum of twenty hours of classroom training, learning about air law and meteorology and airways, and we've teamed up with another third party company to source all of the those studies online so people can actually learn about everything that they need to legally fly in Canada in the comfort of their home in their province with hopefully a ground handling facility near them so while they're going through all the online course they actually we team them up with one of our ground handling instructors getting into a free flight harness and laying out the wing and going through our comprehensive syllabus so right now, with uh, in, on the PPG school side, we have uh, 14 instructors that are going through a two-year mentorship. A lot of them are over a year right now. Uh, they'll achieve their flight instructor status uh, this year. Uh, we're opening up our, our Atlantic Region School uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, uh, our uh, flight instructor, Jimmy Ferraro, out there uh, will achieve or will receive his actual flight instructor certification. And, um, and so yeah, using those kiteboarding connections, we opened up all these phase one ground handling clinics, so that when people have to visit either Regina, Saskatchewan for in flight training or our PEI school, they only have to visit for two or three days to achieve over 30 flights because they're very well prepared prior to actually visiting, visiting our phase two facilities right now. So that's pretty interesting. So you have different phases, you have your PPG school, and that's where they get all the knowledge, like um, 20 hours worth of uh, schooling. Is that correct? Or you have to be like um, where you guys are and go over 12 or 20 hours of schooling at your school. How, how does that work? Yeah, so a lot of the schools in Canada, you would actually have to visit them for 20 hours and be in a classroom <laughs> listening to me talking. No one, I, I don't even like talking during this podcast, uh, let alone having to listen to me talk for 20 hours about meteorology and a bunch of dry stuff. How the course is designed is when people sign up for phase one of our school, they get a link within 24 hours that they can complete their 20 hours of classroom training online in the comfort of their own home whenever it makes sense for them to complete those hours. They receive a certificate of completion once they're done, as well as we've been toying with uh, anybody that's been in the paragliding uh, and para uh, paramotor industry have maybe have heard of the, the name on Andre Bandera. Uh, he's uh, a paramotor paragliding pilot in Australia. And if anybody has looked at the comprehensive uh, online syllabus of videos of just learning how a wing works, we're actually looking at including that as part of our package or into our overall 20 hour package. Um, so, when people sign up for our course, they would have to view all of those videos before even having a wing in their hands. Then as they have a wing in their hands and they're working through their 20 hour course, um, 
they work through their 20 hour course uh, and as well as have a wing in their hands uh, going through the complete phase one A, B and C of our syllabus, which is all of the ground handling. This is everything with, with the exception of actually leaving your feet from the ground. So that's, that's everything in a free flight harness as well as everything with the cage and the motor on your back. Um, even starting up the motor and running with it, but not having a wing attached at this point. So everything that you can do with the exception of your feet leaving from the ground, because that requires a different license underneath Transport Canada, but those phase one facilities at all those locations that we have have facilities at, teach that at home or hopefully close to home so that when people are ready to fly, they just come back and, and they're ready to fly. They demonstrate all of the knowledge that they've gained at our phase one facilities. And a, a lot of the time, people only have to visit for two or three days to, to bang off over 30 flights. And, and I should mention in Canada, it's required in order to move from off of a student pilot permit and actually achieve a ultralight, uh, it's called an aviation document booklet in Canada, you have to achieve a minimum of 30 flights underneath the flight instructor like myself. Okay, so, so our, you go yeah. to school yep, and you have to have 30 flights before you can get your license to fly ultralights in Canada. Correct. To, okay. be, to, to get off of your student pilot permit. Um, there, there's a couple of things, and, and sorry, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, Sean. So in Canada, there's some things that we always have to fly with. Number one is we, we have to fly with a helmet all the time, or you can be shut down and Transport Canada can take your actual paramotor away. The second thing that we need to fly with is a valid medical license, which is a class four medical. And as ultralight or paramotor pilots, we're able to self-declare. So it's just a matter of filling out a form. It doesn't cost anything. We uh, self-declare uh, the medical. It takes anywhere from a month to eight weeks to, in order to get back from Transport Canada. As long as our students or the, the, the pilots getting into the sport don't have any pre-existing conditions like kidney stones to diabetes to there's a list of them so as long as there aren't any pre-existing conditions usually we're getting those those class four medicals back within about a, a month time period once we have the medicals back and as a flight instructor we can show transport canada that our students have the knowledge i.e the 20 hours of classroom training as a flight instructor we are acting as an authorized persons for the ministry of writing a student pilot permit, which is valid for 60 months, so five years. So a lot of the pilots in Canada will just operate on a student pilot permit for, for 60 months. The, the advantage to getting off of the student pilot permit and achieving those 30 flights is when you move into an aviation document booklet, it's valid for 10 years in Canada. And it really looks like a, a passport. Um, it's just a, a baby blue color, but it's got your photo in there. And they are valid for 10 years versus the five year student pilot permit, as long as you keep your medical up to date. The last thing that we need in order to fly legally in Canada is a proof of third-party liability insurance, which a company called Marsh Insurance in Canada, it roughly costs about $159 Canadian annually to, to fly. Um, so we have to have the proof of insurance on us along with our certificate of registration of our aircraft, i.e. our paramotor, as well as our student pilot permit and our medical is tied to that student pilot permit. I know it sounds like a, a lot, um, and we've really tried to break it out into, into a dummy proof system on our website. So if anybody goes to ppgschool.com, that's papa papa golf school.com and goes to the download section, we've done a step by step of what you need to actually legally fly in Canada. Okay. So this is really interesting. I never really got in de uh, such depth with uh, the difference between what we do over here in the States and what. Canada does. So you're saying that you have to wear a helmet all the time. Does that mean flying a paramotor or also ground handling? We teach it right from ground handling because we want our students to get into the mindset that 
stuff can happen at any time. And you guys know from even living in Michigan or down in Florida, uh, dust levels come down, uh, thermals come can come up and uh, a helmet is never a bad thing to wear. Um, so right from day one, as soon as we have our students, even in a road runner or a seed ground handling wing, uh, we put them in a helmet just so that they know that when they're on a paramotor or whenever they're flying a wing, they should be in a helmet and just get used to it because they're going to be in it when they're flying it anyways in Canada. Okay, so having to wear a helmet is when you have a paramotor on your back started is that when it's legal that you I mean, that's when you have to wear a helmet is when you have a paramotor on your back and it started right no uh, i should clarify so l legally as soon as your feet take off from the ground legally you should have a helmet on but, but i'm going to tell you a quick story so when i did my training 10 years ago and one of the reasons why i started my school was some of the the gear that i was introduced to let's just say we, we use all of the safest top of the line equipment. All of my students are now on my 22 motors or Pelini's. Um, we're using uh, 2021, 2022 uh, Mojo PWRs. And uh, uh, even we're, we're a dealer and the Canadian distributor for Icaro helmets, which are 966 certified and they're beautiful helmets. Do you need that for paramotoring in Canada? No, my instructor had me in a hard helmet i'm talking a green hard hat with plastic around the top no chin strap at all so even even a helmet like this which would be like the old would would suffice in transport canada's rules and regulations they don't stipulate what type of helmet that you have to wear other than you need to wear a helmet when you're flying ultralight and you have to appreciate when I say ultralight, that is what paramotor is classified as in under Transport Canada. So when we talk about ultralight, fixed wing ultralight, it, it's that's all of our students actually have to learn about closed marking runways at an aerodrome, which you'll never use or very rarely when you're flying paramotor. But all of our students know that in order to legally fly in Canada. That is so interesting. Looks like Will Fly has joined us from Bad Apples, it looks like. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Um, all right. So you can have a student permit for five years, but as soon as you hit that 30 flight, then you can get your pilot's license for ultralights. Or you can stay with that permit for five years and get hundreds of flights or how does that work exactly yeah no you could have hundreds thousands of flights oh. within those five years um uh, your, your student pilot permit is um is literally just a, a piece of paper that you have to have on you and your medical is a tie to that your your class four medical is only valid for for two years so 24 months so we recommend when you get to about a year and a half go see your aviation examiner again, make sure that you have your valid medical because your student pilot permit is not valid without that actual medical and keeping that in, that annual insurance up to date. I'm going to say probably, I'm not going to say 90, but a good 80% of pilots in Canada will never achieve, yeah, para, sorry, 80% of paramotor pilots in Canada will never achieve the, the ultra light aviation document booklet or the full license because what happens after those 30 flights is they just need to go back to a school and demonstrate competency and that school can reissue another student pilot permit for another five years. We're trying to do things a little bit different at PPG school. We want people to get their full ultra light pilots license. So how we've designed our course, or our online course, is we take our students to 97% um, going through the comprehensive online syllabus, which Jim can contest to because he had to take it. And once they get to 97%, they stop the course. We can issue the student pilot permit because those students have the, the required knowledge for us as flight instructors to issue that student pilot permit and be legally fly 
now after Jim receives 30 flights, he can request, it's called a letter of recommend, so that he can write an ultralight test, which is 80 multiple choice questions that he needs to pass with a 60% to pass. And then once passing at 60%, he can apply for an aviation document book. And I think Jim actually in, in the last quarter, anyways, I, I believe Jim uh, took his test. I sure did. And how did you do, Jim? <laughs> 86. 86%. So it was a pass. Good. So Good job. And in in order to be a, a flight instructor, if you're if you don't already have a PPL, a, a, a private pilot's license or a commercial pilot's license, us as flight instructors, we need to achieve a minimum of 90% on that ultralight test in order to move to the next stage, which is called a Phi 10 exam. Interesting. Um, very interesting. And you have to go through a two year class to become an instructor. Is that correct? I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's two years. We need a minimum of 50 hours logging 50 hours of flying. And for you US states, I mean, you guys can get that in a couple of weeks, but for us Canadians that, you know, it's blowing 20 knots here and, and our seasons, we can only, I, I shouldn't say we, we get to fly all year round because we do a lot of ski launches and out in the winter time and anybody that's flown in the winter, they appreciate how, how dense the air is and how solid the wings are. And if you've never had the opportunity to, to uh, experience that yeah, winter time flying is superior to any other condition anywhere. Well, I guess if you're at sea level, but that's still not the same. Winter time, the, the motors are snappy and yeah, the wings are just so solid. Um, it, it takes, if you're, if you're just getting into it because of all of the uh, changing the medicals from a class four to a class three and having to pay and see an aviation examiner and wait for Transport Canada to sign off on you for a class three medical um, before writing some of the exams and then achieving 90% on the ultralight exam, as well as there, it's called a Phi 10 exam, and it has nothing to do with aviation. It's all about the methodologies of teaching and how people retain the information. So you need to achieve 80% of that exam, as well as do an in flight test underneath an aviation examiner, which is not even myself. This is from a, uh, an ultralight aviation examiner which might not be near you so you need to book in time to go visit somebody to do a it's only a 20 minute in-flight test but you need to demonstrate your competency and there's a an oral and a written to that goes with that as well so it takes it takes about two years to to get through the whole process if anybody's looking at at becoming a flight instructor that is and that's so interesting mm-hmm um, Jim, was there any questions in the chat that I missed? Not at the moment. Okay. Um, we are rolling on a half an hour of this podcast. We're only going to be doing an hour tonight, and Aaron is going to be giving away some really cool merch. So make sure you say hello. Make sure you say hello to Jim in the chat so we know that you're in here. You must be present to win, and we're going to be uh, giving away some stuff in about a half an hour from now. So Aaron is a instructor in Canada and we're going over all the different things that are different from learning how to fly in Canada and learning how to fly over here in the States. A little bit, a little bit different. Uh, it seems like there's a little bit more cost involved too. Like not really a lot, but $159 a year for a third party insurance and other than that, what else does the student have to pay out of pocket, not to the stu not to the school, but to be able to fly? I mean, obviously, you got to get your, your motor and wing, but um, what else do, do, do you need to do? Um, no, other than the, the 159 uh, of your annual uh, third party uh, liability insurance, uh, the, the medical is free, the, the uh, class four medical. 
um, as lo- again, I have, need to stipulate, as long as you don't have any pre-existing conditions, it is free to submit. It just takes time. So any U.S. student or pilot that's interested in flying in Canada, you need to get onto Transport Canada site and just Google Transport Canada Class 4 Aviation Medical, and there'll be a form that comes up. You need to fill out that form and submit it, and you won't be legal to fly in Canada without that form regardless. You also will need a student pilot permit, which you need to visit one of our schools or another flight instructor uh, to issue an authorized person as, as an authorized person to issue that student pilot permit, and then just prove that you have that third party liability insurance so it's not uh it's not too much more and i always look at it like we we have u.s uh a bunch of u.s clients that visit our schools uh annually um a lot of them just uh aren't they weren't satisfied after researching some of the schools in the u.s with the the capabilities of teaching whether some of them were only teaching foot launch and they wanted to do trike training for an example Mm -hmm. um and, and for U.S. students, when they come up to Canada, A, it's beautiful to fly here. There's outs everywhere. It's so safe after out of all the places I've flown. And, and B, <laughs> when you're on the U.S. dollar, it's actually pretty cheap. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm glad that you were mentioning that as far as U.S. you know students coming to Canada. So mm-hmm. if I wanted to go up to Canada and fly with Jim, yep. Um, I'd yep. have to get up with you and I'd have to get the class four medical, which yep. you said, which you said I can do that. Is, is that something you can do online? You can. Okay. So get the class four medical online, um, pay for my third party insurance, which is $159 a year. And that's through, what is it called again? It's through Marsh insurance and it's their silver, silver wings package. So marsh.ca. M A R S H. Yep. Dot C A. You said. I'm just gonna double check. M A R S H. Dot C A. Uh, it's actually dot com. M A R, and and it's S H. Okay. So M A R S H. Dot com to get the insurance and that insurance is good for Canada only or Canada and the States. Uh, I would have to dig a little deeper, okay. um, but I believe it's only, I believe it's only within Canada for the third okay. party, but don't, don't quote me on that. Okay. Well, that makes more sense. And I kind of uh, was going to, I kind of figured that's probably what it was. Um, I can, we can go up there with the class four medical, the insurance, and then I'd have to fly your motor because it has to be certified, correct? Correct. Yeah, you, you can apply for, to fly your aircraft. Um, and um, uh, there is a cost, I believe it's 65 or $85 to, to register your paramotor in Canada for a, a boat. 30 days if you're coming to visit. Um, and uh, I apologize, I don't have that information, uh, but we very rarely do we actually have students that actually bring their own equipment. When they're here, they're flying our school equipment. So, because it is registered with Transport Canada. Okay, so if if we already fly over here, do we mm-hmm. need to be a certain PPG one, two or three to uh, go to your school? And if we do, um, you know, what do we need and, and how much would it cost to, uh, to go through just to be able to fly in, uh, in Canada? So the, I guess the big thing is, is um, having to do that minimum of the 20 hours of the classroom training, the online training, which you can do at home in the U.S., so, but you need to be able to prove that you understand all of the rules and regulations and the guidelines that set it forth by Transport Canada to legally fly here so that I, as a flight instructor, can issue that student pilot permit. So we would definitely have to sign you up for phase one, at least, so that we know that you we can write that student pilot permit, you have that medical and you have your insurance. And then once you came and you demonstrated your competency, I wouldn't be charging the U.S. clients the phase two fee of actually putting everybody up in the air. It's just a matter of making sure that you are 
competent of flying. And, uh, and then we could actually do some tours down the valley, some foot drags in some low level waters and, or climb over the mountain. Awesome. <laughs> Would we bring our own wing or do the wings have to be um, certified too there? The wings don't have to be certified uh, whatsoever. It, it just has to do with, and it's not even the motor, Sean. It's, it's just the, the actual cage and chassis. Um, like if uh, we're the Canadian distributor for Scout, so Scout before they imported into Canada, um, they didn't even include any ID tags on their actual chassis themselves where now anything that they import from Slovakia um, they know that we need their the manufacturer's name the model number the serial number of that frame um, and then the year of the manufacturer so those are the four things that we need in order to to register those pair motors with Transport Canada. Okay that is really interesting I, I'm, I'm really glad that we're we're able to go through all this stuff because I know that I was wanting to go up to Canada, but it seemed like it was impossible to go up there uh, because of all the different rules and regulations that you guys have. So if I wanted to go up there and do this, how would I get up with you? Uh, what, what's your website and email and how would I get up with you to be able to do something like this? So the umbrella company is exploresports.ca, uh, E-X-P-L-O-R-E s p o r t s dot c a that would get you if you went to the kiteboarding it would give you all the kiteboarding stuff and there's going to be one that says paramotor if you click on that tab it's going to take you to a total different website which is ppg school papa papa golf school dot com where you can find all of that information in order to legally fly here okay so if i wanted to come up and hang out with jim and go fly um, I need, I need 20 hours of online school. So I'd have to get up with you first and go through the 20 hours online. I have to figure out when I want to go up and see Jim. So as soon as I say, all right, I think I'm going to go up and see Jim and fly. What is the, wh what's the amount of time that you believe that we as, um, pilots in the United States would have to go through all the stuff to be able to go up to Canada and uh, fly with uh, fly with you guys. But how long do you think that would be? A month or less or? Oh, way less. I mean, a let, week let, or let's, so? yeah, let, let, let's, let's face it. There, the, the one challenge that we have in this sport and which, which I'd like to change in my lifetime is there's so many different rules and regulations are revolving around paramotor worldwide. There is no standard for for training. Um, it, it's not like think of I I, I really equivalent I, I, I really relate paramotor to scuba diving years ago. It was the the guys that came up with Patty that now have forty four hundred locations worldwide that put a standardization on that sport. So you, as a paramotor pilot, wouldn't it be amazing that if you took your helmet and your wing and you could just jump on a plane and go to, hmm, let's say Costa Rica or Panama or Brazil or yeah. New Zealand or Iceland. You yes. take your you take your wing and your mo without your motor because we know that we have such hard times traveling with motors. It doesn't matter if it's electric or gas, unless that motor is uh, until that motor runs gas through the engine, um, we can leave. More. We can um, transport a motor, but as soon as that motor puts gas through the engine, then we actually have uh, issues getting it back home and stuff like that. So you as a paramotor pilot, wouldn't it be great to be able to take your wing, take your helmet, you know the way you're flying, go to a reputable school, that reputable school says, okay, we need to make sure that you're a competent pilot. They do a one day course with you so that you demonstrate that you can fly without coming in on your ass and breaking a whole bunch of gear and now you actually just have a tour guide to go fly some of the best locations around that that spot that would be my goal in my life is to actually create these unique opportunities to have either rental centers or team up with quality schools 
um, like the uh, from the aviator locations to to Guy in, in Costa Rica um, to Andre uh, in in Australia, um, pick some of the schools in New Zealand and and come up with a comprehensive syllabus that we can you could start your training in Canada or the U.S. and show that you're a competent pilot. Now be able to travel to some of these destinations and and fly. It looks like in the super chat, Stephen Goodpasser said, is there an online site where we in the US can get test questions a, um, a day, start the paperwork and expedite the process? Uh, I assume that we'd have to go to ppgschool.com and register with you. Correct. Yeah, you, you would have to register for at least the, the phase one. Uh, and, and the reason why we split the cost, um, our cost here in Canada currently um, is uh, it's two, or it's $19.99 for phase one, $19.99 for phase two. That's Canadian dollars, so about like $1,000 for you Americans. <laughs> it's, uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's $2,000 for phase one. But once we receive that link, uh, then we work with our clients on submitting those medicals into our contacts at Transport Canada. And within 24 hours, you receive a link for the, the online course. And then you do that at your own discretion. Um, I monitor everything on the back end so I know exactly where you're at through the whole course. And then as you're getting through the course and your medical comes back, um, then I can issue a student pilot permit, invite you to come up to Canada and you can fly your motors and come fly with us. Awesome. And we can uh, keep that student pilot's license for five years. And then every five years, we can just re-up for another five years if we want to. Absolutely. That's awesome. Would we be able to, uh, if we you know, flew our 30 flights up there, be able to get our ultralight pilot's license from you also? Uh, not from me personally, that would be through Transport Canada, the AE okay. uh, multiple multiple choice question exam that you need to achieve a minimum of 60%. Honestly, for Americans, it, it wouldn't benefit you at all to get a, an aviation document booklet. Um, it just, it has all of our stickers in it um, from our radio operators license to our different classes of certification for ultralight or paramotor. The, the aviation document booklet, um, I should back up your first section. So, so when we turn in that medical, we get a six digit number on that medical, which becomes our file number with Transport Canada and anything that we do in aviation, whether we're flying gyroplanes or helicopters or get an APTL license, that is our file number for life. So anything tied to that six digit number, Transport Canada follows all the way through. Okay. So that sounds good. Um, I, I mean, I don't really see going up to Canada too many times a year to fly with Jim, but you know, I suppose I would suppose that he's worth it to get that insurance for a whole year and only going to be hanging with them for a week. <laughs> Sean, did, Sean, did it? Did, did it? Did Jim show you the the pictures of the the fly in of of last season's fly in in September? I don't did think so, Jim. Did you? I... Jim went up. Jim crawled up to, we couldn't find him. Jim crawled up to about, well, it was tw what, 12.5 in, we were around Lake Diefenbaker and, uh, and we were just, nah, just pissing around and, and the fog was coming off of the lake. So at about 200 feet, it just, it, you were riding on top of a cloud at 200 feet. You could see the, the little towers just peeking out. And we actually had to wait for the, the sun to start heating up the ground to actually break through. And, uh, yeah, we we stayed up for about two and a half, three hours, and and we're all landed. Then, sure enough, Jim comes comes down a little bit later, and he's like, "Where were you?" And he's like, well, "I went up to twelve five, and we were at <laughs> I, sh I should say twelve because that was the airspace that we were in. Whereas we shouldn't be going more than twelve thousand there, but but Jim just decided to push it a little bit further. <laughs> Sounds like Jim. So so, how many flyings do you have? um up there around you guys a pretty pretty good amount yeah f fly there's a couple in alberta uh, there's one uh, coming up uh for may long weekend 
uh, in BC as well. Some of our, we're, we're going to have some of our team that's going to represent out there. I, I can't go because I've got a hip replacement on Wednesday, um, but uh, I would love to be joining that one. Uh, we do an annual one uh, for PPG school for all of our, our existing pilots as well as anybody that we've met in the community. Um, we actually operate out of the, some of the provincial parks in Saskatchewan. And uh, this year, uh, we've got keys to a undisclosed destination right now where the park manager is giving us keys to host a private event to bring in generators and music and, uh, and camping for free. And, um, and we're all going to uh, yeah, fly out of that location just so that we're not, uh, we're not buzzing around or, or bugging anybody else that's, you know, non paramotor enthusiasts. And uh, when we have our own private campground to fly out of, and again, bringing in music and fire, and we do a bunch of games where we do, uh, you have to collect rings with your, your feet from doing foot drags, and then you have to go up to a 30 foot pole and back down and do bing ba bean bag drops and kind of all that kind of just fun fun games build community have fun and and then share some drinks after definitely now april 8th of 2024 there's going to be a complete solar eclipse starting at mexico going through the united states and up into canada you guys plan on doing any type of uh, fly-in or flying while there is a solar eclipse because i haven't done that yet but it sounds pretty interesting that does sound interesting, uh, considering uh, legally we're, we're, we can only fly 20 minutes uh, before sunrise and 20 minutes after sundown. So to be able to fly uh, during a solar eclipse, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what the legal ramifications are. Do you have to turn in your strobe and be in G airspace? I don't know. That'd be <laughs> something to think about. I don't know. I mean, I don't see any reason why you'd have to do anything extra i'd turn on my my um my strobes just because it's dark all of a sudden i think it'd be really neat so oh yeah i can't Absolutely. wait until april 8th of 2024 now here we are at 745 guys uh aaron is going to be giving away a bunch of prizes did you guys say hello to jim in the super chat make sure you guys are here in the next uh, 15 minutes so we can show you what we're going to be giving away um, any other questions in the super chat, Mr. Jim? There, there is one from Angela. She was wondering, what's the coldest temperature that you've flown in here? Uh, me personally, I've gone out in, and you have to appreciate this is degrees Celsius. It was getting close to, to minus 20 degrees Celsius uh, without the wind chill. And obviously we weren't in too much wind, but it was probably blowing four knots so that drops down to about minus 25 to minus 30 um it, it's cold like it, it's like we're on you're on skis and uh we we're just doing a bit of a photo shoot i had a bunch of the kite borders out and uh i was kind of slaloming through all the all the kite borders um for the shoot but i i can say if you're in anything under under minus 10 degrees celsius celsius with the motion heat heated gloves and uh full face masks like you need to bundle up just for just for appropriate for the weather it's definitely doable and w winter time flying is amazing it, it is the, the motors are so snappy and and your wings are so solid you, you, you're never going to be able to bank like that interesting but that's still really kind of cold <laughs> I, and, and, and i should i should mention i mean in, in the winter time in saskatchewan and because we're, we're so far north we we have very limited amount of, of hours of daylight like you, you might get you know three or four hours of, of daylight we're in the summertime it, the, the, we were i was teaching this past week and i had four students here and we were in the field by five o'clock in the morning because sunrise was at five twenty two, and sundown right now is at about 8.30, 8.34. And th this isn't even peak time yet. Usually sunrise will be ab about 4.30 in the morning and sundown will be closer to 10.30 at night. So when Jim visited for his par paramotor training, we might as well just sleep at the field because you're, you're, <laughs> you go to sleep for a few hours and then you're trying to get all the flights in before the thermals are kicking off all midday. So 
we had some early mornings with Jim. <laughs> that is really interesting. My goodness, uh, you guys have so many rules and regulations compared to what we have in the United States. And I've seen a couple of people say things like that in the super chat. Um, we are really super lucky in the States to be able to just, you know, go up and fly pretty much anytime. We don't need licenses. If you want to wear a helmet, you can, if you're not, it's no big deal. It's not like you're going to get your stuff taken away. Um, you don't have student license and permits. You don't have to have uh, third party insurance. Um, wow. And, and 20 hours of classroom time, uh, very interesting, uh, the difference between Canada and what we got going over here in the States. But Sean, you, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject for a second. Y yes, we have to do a lot of, of training. And I, I believe th there's a lot of that training that, that we're never going to use. Absolutely. You, you don't need to know yeah, what okay, settings your okay. Aileron needs to, needs to be in. Um, for your fixed wing when you're flying paramotor and how many times are we actually flying out of an aerodrome. But when it comes to aerial um, collision avoidance, as well as I, I, was in, I was in Florida visiting one of my mentors, Eric Dufour, years ago. This was a couple of years after he sold his business to Eric and, and uh, Travis for Aviator. And we're outside of Valakala Airport in Florida. And uh, I want to say it was a, a Ukrainian or a Russian. Are they the same <laughs> these days? I don't know. <laughs> um, I won't go there. Um, but I remember this this European coming over, and he wanted to fly out of Balakella, and and it was a closed compound. And because he, he could illegally fly anywhere, he was trying to take off from the parking lot. We had to go out and politely say that, I'm sorry, this isn't a good place to fly because of all the mangroves and the router that's coming over these bushes here. And before I had left, about four or five days later, I read about him in the paper. He ended up launching out of a parking lot, hitting a power line. He had a young wife of 24 and a young son, and he was starting. she was starting a GoFundMe page because he just wanted to fly in, in the U.S. So Tran Transport Canada, I, I really need to stipulate this. Transport Canada is not there to be dicks and, and, and to avoid anybody from flying. They, they're there to just make sure that everybody is knowledgeable and is as safe as they can be in order to fly. And I feel that's why we have a lot of U.S. clients that come up from the U.S. to join our schools here in Canada. That was really awesome. Guys, we're 10 minutes out before we're going to be giving away some stuff. So make sure you say hello to Jim in the super chat. Jim, you got something going on? What's up? Will had a really good question. He's on the phone. Maybe he wants to ask it. Um, he's he's over yeah. at the at the uh, fly and he says that. Can the, you hear me okay? Uh, oh, okay. Go ahead, bud. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm sorry that it was just way too noisy. I couldn't unmute it at the time, but and I had to move heaven and earth just to get on here. So. <laughs> uh, it, whoever's coming to Bad Apple, Sean, you're going to be in for a, an amazing event. Just amazing. Uh, but yeah, I was curious. Uh, nice to meet you, Aaron. Um, is, yeah, you as well. In Canada, uh, can you fly a paramotor without visual reference to the surface? So no, that's, you can fly over a cloud IFR, bank just so long as you have what, uh, proper cloud clearance and visibility. No, you have to have, uh, actually, I should go back to Jim and your training. What does it say about flying over clouds? What, what do you have to legally, that, here's a test question for you, Jim. Did you get this one right under your exam? <laughs> do you remember? You've got to be able to see the ground. You have to be able to see the ground. So... Um, when we were flying in our flying last September, when they, all the fog was lifting off the lake and we, and we had flown, it was about, it was less than 200 feet. It was probably about 80 to hundred feet. We were going through all of that fog and then we popped up on top and we were riding on top of a cloud, but it was only like a hundred feet up. That, that is illegal. However, we did, we were able to see different ground spots that we're clearing. So as long as we have visual reference of the ground, um, then we are legal to fly. But you're supposed to have at least a mile ahead of you 
um, of uh, in any direction when you're flying. Um, so the answer is n no, you're not supposed to, <laughs> to fly over the clouds and, and be soft in. That's definitely the same way we're over here. You gotta have visual reference to the ground. Can't go um, cloud surfing, unfortunately, mm -hmm. which would be fun, but uh, I totally understand. I don't want you know somebody on IFR to pop out and you know be heading right towards me. So stay away from the clouds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got to run, guys. I'm I'm glad I could make make it in here, but uh, I'm sorry I wasn't on earlier. Glad you can make it, Will. <laughs> we'll yeah, see man. you out there soon. I hope. Looking forward to it. Y'all have right. a good night. Be safe. All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Five minutes till, and we're going to be giving away some stuff. So I guess if you want to, Aaron, uh, tell us what you uh, plan on giving away. Well, how many people do we have on the on the chat? The how rooms? many people do we have, Jim? We have. Give me a few moments. <laughs> At this particular moment. Looks like we got about 20 people and 13 likes. So anybody that wants to hit that like, that thumbs up, we appreciate it. So about 20 people right now. Okay. So for those, why don't we have um, for the, and how do we, how do we get the, uh, the prizes to them? Do, do people uh, send emails uh, with, uh, addresses or anything like that or yeah we can uh, we can we can definitely have them get up with you through email and okay. uh, send their information to you okay and sean is any of this video or on video or can people see if i hold stuff up or is this all audio oh no right now it's a video for the people okay. that are that are able to use or or able to uh to i i don't know uh receive this because if this is not live sorry guys uh, the only thing you can do is text me 501-747-3558 and if you're listening to this i will text uh, i will send you out some stickers so don't worry if you are not live uh, you won't be able to get the merch that he has aaron has that he's going to be sending out but we can give you some clear prop tv stickers okay so jim how many how many likes do we have so far we said 13 Lucky number 13. That's actually one of my lucky numbers. Oh, we're up 21. to 20, 20, 20 likes and 20 viewers. <laughs> okay, okay. We did good. Um, All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for the 21 likes or the 20 viewers that we have, um, we will be sending out a student pilot handbook, which is a comprehensive syllabus of everything to do with Oh, meteorology to clouds, uh, introduction to paramotor, what to expect, uh, different uh, wind directions, uh, what the requirements of a good launch area, uh, for launching, reverse launching tips, uh, launching and landing area tips, um, landing process in a paramotor, uh, air law and aerial collision avoidance, including our complete syllabus for both our online as well as our uh, ground handling and uh, kind of a just a, something to throw on your your side so it, it even includes your pre-flight safety check as well as your uh, motor uh, maintenance checklist and um, if you were to come to Canada we have our letters of recommend that you would need signed by a flight instructor as well as a complete flight log so that you can, if you're not running a TAC meter, which you should be, um, you can uh, monitor how many hours are on, on your motor. So we can, uh, we can definitely get uh, the 20 or 21 uh, of those handbooks out to everybody that uh, joined tonight. Uh, thanks for listening to me chat because I really don't like the voice. And we do have a couple other draws, but I'll let, uh, I'll let Sean decide how we want to give away some of these, but we've got some of our Explore Sports t-shirts, just with the logo on the front and our slogan on the back, life begins at the end of your comfort level, as well as a hat. And you know what, oh. with these, we'll throw in some 
because everybody could use because uh, everybody could use some. We'll throw in a couple of uh, BR9 uh, ES uh, spark plugs uh, with uh, with the hat and the t-shirt as as well. Very Holy cool. smokes! Cool, that is really oh. awesome. That is super duper. So I guess we got to figure out since we don't have a spinning wheel of winning things how we're going to give these things away. So I'm thinking about some of the things that you said. So, so right now, guys, because there is a lag and some of you might be lagging more than others. If you hit refresh now in 30 seconds, we'll continue the uh, podcast. So hit refresh and that way you're as close to, um, um, you know, where we are right now without any lag. So go ahead and hit refresh. We'll see you in about 30 seconds. All right. So while everybody is hitting the refresh and making sure that they're on the same timestamp as we are, uh, we're going to figure out uh, a couple of questions. So we're going to be giving away a hat and a shirt. So there's two different uh, uh, winners that we can have right now. And we will look and we will figure out what we're going to uh, ask as far as a question. Okay, so I'm thinking about some of the stuff that we talked about. If they were here for the entire tr uh, time, the entire podcast, they'll probably know this. And if you are listening to this within the last 15 minutes, you probably will know this also. So let's figure out a question. If there's a question, Aaron, that you already want to ask about your school that you already talked about, and the first person that pops up the quest, the 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 answer, sure. yeah, uh, we can yeah, do no, that. I've I've got a question. So okay. towards the beginning of the po podcast, before I had even started down the career of paramotor, I had. I have now been teaching a alternative sport for nearly two decades. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is that sport? All right. The first person that answers that question, what is the first sport that he's been teaching for a couple of decades that he talked about at the very beginning? If you don't know, go over to his uh, .com and it does have it on his website. So the first person that it pops up will win a what a t-shirt or a hat. What are we giving away first? We're going to give away. Why don't we give away a, a t-shirt and a set of uh, BR9ES uh, spark plugs, as oh. well as the student handbook. All right. It looks like PPG. The other Nick said kite surfing. Kite surfing will do. Kite surfing, kiteboarding, absolutely. So right. I'm assuming. Tony said six. <laughs> well, well, the 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 answer to the whole, you know, what why are we here is forty two. So Tony was pretty close at six, but it's forty two. Um, no, so kite surfing is the uh, correct answer. And the first thing I see here is PPG. The other Nick, uh, you have won the uh, hat or the t shirt. What do we say? Let's let uh, let's let Nick pick as the first winner. Nick, since you are the first winner, type in as, what you would like: the hat or the shirt, as well as uh, his uh, his shirt size. There that you would go. Be wonderful. Yay! The other Nick says Bill H. All right. So think of a, another question, and while you're doing that, I'm going to say hello to the people that are in the chat that I wasn't able to say hello to before. So let's go ahead and go through real quick. Gary Simmons or Simons, John Wayne, Kara PPG, Tommy Sutherland, um, Goldie Thiel. I hope I said that right. Uh, PPG, the other knit, John Wayne, Angela Preslick, Matt Sloper, Joshua Marsh, Matt Sloper again, lots of people, Plainfield PPG, Angela Preslick, Joshua again. Lots of people chatting, lots of lots of chats. That's awesome. JP Tulo in the house. I actually think I saw him online earlier. He is at Bad Apples, I believe. Katie Hulte. Am I, did I say that right? I hope so. Steven Good. Hey, if I'm saying it wrong and you know how to say it right, go ahead and say it right. No, it's because you don't have your glasses on. No, I do not. I, I better put on my... 
PPG glasses real oh, quick. Oh, good lord. See? There we go. Now look at that. Yeah, mad slow. If, I have, if I have to wear my slow. glasses, you got to wear your glasses. I have to. I love wearing my glasses. I just yeah, got to like, lean into it's... this. James <laughs> is in the house. Tony Marzano. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, I look very, very grandpa-ish, which is, you know, that's, that's the look I'm looking for, you know? We'll fly. Hi. We'll fly. Who else have we got in here? Bill H. Look at all the chatting. I've really missed a lot of chats. Um, was there any other questions that we missed? Mr. Jim, did you see any? There was one. Okay. Uh, Steve, I, I really want Aaron to answer this because it scares me. Do you okay. have to mask up to fly with geese in Canada? <laughs> I, I've flown with geese. I actually have a video of um, them literally, uh, I don't want to say touching my bridles because that could be really bad, um, but I can definitely post some videos. I'm really, really bad guys at posting videos, but I have hours and hours of content and I have lots of flying with geese and different types of birds as well. Okay, I got another question because I, well, how do you, how do you catch up to the geese? I can't seem to. They take off and they're gone. It's called it's called a speed it's called a speed bar, Jim. And you're you'll you'll be. I, have we installed that yet on yours? No, we haven't. <laughs> okay, speed bar, free ride, Viper, <laughs> Luna. <laughs> speed bar is pretty awesome. <laughs> Ah, there it is. I forgot I put both of them here. So just in case I missed. All right. So I got both my uh, my old man um, classes. All right. So good let's, job, good job. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. And of course, my hair is all funky. Somebody said something about my <laughs> every time that they watch it is like my hair is funky. It's like, yeah, I'm trying different things. You know, it's like, I don't know. Um, you need to gel it. Where's the gel, man? You know? uh, I think I would like to know. <laughs> Where, which different, which places in the U.S. he's flown? Sorry, did, where I've flown in the U.S.? Yes, where are you flown? Yeah. Um, I have property outside of uh, Red Lodge, Montana. So um, we fly off the Beartooth Mountains. So we do a lot of paragliding as well when uh, when we're visiting Red Lodge. But um, I've flown PPG in Red Lodge. Um, it's a little bit tough because when I was flying Red Lodge, I was on uh, Pliny 190s, and uh, we have to we have to break open the uh, the high uh, screw and and turn it about a, an hour and five, an hour and fifteen minutes because of the altitude being at 5,600 feet in Red Lodge uh, versus in in Saskatchewan here we're at about 1,800. Um, so you, we do have to void our warranty on the motors. Um, when we do fly Red Lodge. Um, I love flying down in, in North Carolina, the Outer Banks. I mean, it, it's nostalgic. It, it, nostalgic. It's where the Wright brothers first took flight in 1903. And when you get that beautiful ocean breeze coming down and you can just be cruising up and down the sort or around the, the, uh, the ocean on the, um, uh, soaring the ridges as well, uh, getting some of the lift coming off the mountains. It's beautiful. Um, uh, flown down in Florida, uh, California, uh, Arizona, Nevada, um, and stopped at a couple different places when I drive down to, to North Carolina as well. Because I, I usually take my 16 foot cargo trailer with Kuiper Ring and paramotor equipment for all of our students and, and people that are are headed down that way for a kiteboarding uh, vacation. But um, yeah, lo love flying the U.S. I love flying. Period. It's you're scuba diving in the sky. It's seeing the world in a different way. Um, Canada does have some amazing places to fly. Whether we're flying over the mountains in Pemberton or Whistler area in BC, or whether we're flying at our Atlantic school in in Prince Prince Edward Island. Uh, with the the red rocks and the cliffs and the red sand, um, and getting lift from the from the ocean hitting the the walls there, it's just love it everywhere. It's even in Saskatchewan where you wouldn't think of like Google Regina. It's the city that rhymes with fun. Google it seriously and see where we are. And we're we're dead center in Saskatchewan. It's farmland is as as far as the eye can see. 
but yet you get to get into these little valleys and carve around trees and and there's there's outs everywhere it's not like Kenora, Ontario, with which is the Canadian tundra, where there's just rocks, trees, and water everywhere. Where you take off, you have to cone up to be able to get to your next spot. Here, you can land anywhere, and actually, as part of our our syllabus that we teach for in-flight training, is a minimum of two times. All of our students will actually have two engine outs. We run them out of gas on purpose so that they get. In the in the mindset that you can have an engine out at any time so but it's safe to do here we just drive across the field pick them up and go grab them some gas and they get back in the air and fly so love flying everywhere but some of the the best flying in the u.s i i do love i do love the outer banks and again flying around jockey's ridge where the wright brothers took flight it's it's pretty cool kiteboarding is even better <laughs> yeah where, one, of these, one of these days i'm going to kite well where would be Definitely. your most favorite place to have flown? Hmm. Panama is pretty awesome. Uh, Brazil is pretty epic. Uh, the sand dunes. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, those are pretty, pretty special. Um, I haven't, I haven't done Iceland yet. I was supposed to go last year uh, with Miroslav and the scout team. Um, obviously, we're a retailer scout in Canada, and I was looking at taking over that tour for Miroslav. But uh, with the recent changes in his family and expanding his family, and the amount of demand that he had, um, he decided to go ahead with uh, with last year's tour. Um, Miroslav's focus was to actually open up a bunch of other uh, destinations in Europe and start focusing on them. And that's why I was going to take over the Iceland tour because we had a group of North Americans that were interested in in joining. Um, I uh, COVID ended up hitting, and really to be able to go, I, I've got two young boys myself at ages well, they're ten and thirteen now. Um, to be able to go for a two week excursion and then have to quarantine coming back for two weeks, it, it just didn't make much sense. Um, that's not saying that this future, including this August, that might not be joining, the, or I, I might, might as well be joining that Iceland tour, but I have intentions of heading over to Italy, visiting our four manufacturers, Vizzerazzi, Polini, uh, Icaro, as well as Fly Product, um, and then heading over to Slovakia before teaming up with a, a bunch of guys in Munich for, for Beer Fest. <laughs> so we'll nice. see how this summer goes. Yeah. Really super nice. Um, all right. Um, we're going to be giving away, a, uh, something here in just a moment. Uh, um, so this is for whatever PPG, the other Nick doesn't want, um, either the hat or the shirt. So, um, when did man first fly? What is the date? And what is, answer? and what is the year, <laughs> the date and the year? of when did man start flying? You can find that under the history of aviation or just do a Google search, it'll pop up. And if you don't know, it'll blow you away. And bonus, if you get their names, we should throw in, what else do I have to throw in? <laughs> And believe it or not, believe it or not, it's not in the 1900s. Mm -hmm. Our first flight was not the Wright brothers. It was not. No, do a quick Google search. You'll be like, what? Next, you're going to say it wasn't in Ohio, too. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, well, well, you know, I'm not sure exactly where it was, but it's not in the 1900s. Do a quick Google search. When did was man it first the start da Vinci thing? Leonardo da Vinci, like... Not flying, falling with style. And as soon as I see the correct one, I will screen share what Google has told me that I've seen that I thought was really neat. No UFOs do not count, Stephen. But do <laughs> hot air balloons count? I don't know. If you can uh, pull it up on Google and show me that that was before the first flight that I see, then you win. December 17th B. 1904. No, it's not in the 1900s. No, it's not Orville or Wilbur Wright. It's not in North Carolina. Come on, guys. It's a quick Google search. When did man start flying? Uh, 
I just need a date. That's all I need is a date. I don't need names, just a date. First date that pops up. 503 AD, says Walter. I don't know. That's possible, but I don't know if there's any proof. November 21st, 1783, Charles Walsh. All right, so there we go. Someone actually did a Google search. I'll show you the uh, screen share so you can see exactly what I found and why he won. Let me go ahead and go there. Sounds like lies to me. It was in Ohio, though, right? Well, let's see here. The first manned flight was on November 21st, 1783. And he died November 21st, 1783. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the first flight. Uh, it's a Google, and there it is. So November That's, 21st. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yes. You can find hey. it in our history of aviation. It's really amazing. Okay, uh, hold that. Can I borrow the screen for a second? Yeah, go oh, ahead, I buddy. can't. Yeah, you can you can share it if you want. Um, I can't. I'm on my phone. Uh, but I can do this. It's the exact same picture with a different date. Can you see that? Let me look. Hold on. December seventeenth. I see that. Exact same picture. I think Google has some issues. What was so, the description it gave for yours, though? Um, let me go back there, see if I can find it. Hold on. I think I closed it out. No, it doesn't matter. I'm just being particular. Oh, Long nice. story short, Ohio for the win. You hear that, Angela and Tony and uh, all my peeps in the chat? Oh, Charlie here Bill. Is. Here it is. I found Will. it again. Will here, fly. Here, here it is. I found it again. It's under... Um, grc.nasa.gov history of flight hmm. so um if that was too tricky i guess what we can do is ask aaron to give us another question if that was too tricky is that too tricky do we need a, a real question did we did we have two winners did we have two answers of the december 17th and the november 21st or did only oh. one person come in no, only one person got the, the date that Sean was looking for. Steven says oh. a government conspiracy. and uh, Roswell. What? Charlie Walsh got it. November 21st, 1783. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I found on there. And uh, uh, Charlie Walsh, um, he got it. So Charlie Walsh is the man. We'll just say that Charlie Walsh won this one because, wait a minute, Bef Joshua Marsh above him. Said November twenty first, seventeen eighty three. Oh, you're right. I see that right underneath Angela Preslick. Oh, but above that, Charlie Walsh has it there. Said November twenty first. Okay, 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 okay. So we were right. All right. Ugh, too many weird things going on. But uh, so, how do the people that won your uh, your merch? How do they get up with you, and how do they receive it? Absolutely. So anybody that's interested in that joined tonight, that's interested in the Paramotor Student Handbook, which has pre-flight checklists and just a comprehensive syllabus to follow if you're learning and getting into the sport, as well as flight logs and just some good tips and stuff like that, definitely uh, hit me up and I'll mail them out uh, directly to you. Um, you can uh, get a hold of me through explorsports.ca or ppgschool.com that's papa papa golf school.com and all of my information uh, is on there reach out via email send me your your address and uh, we'll get stuff sent out to you guys well that is awesome and here we are 10 minutes before you have to go we got that all taken care of had a pretty uh pretty interesting the first flight i guess we'll have to look into that a little bit more but that's what i've been saying is as far as the first flight was you know um, not the wright brothers interesting and uh there's even some balloons that were up uh ten thousand years ago apparently that were flying people around so go figure crazy maybe, maybe there's maybe there were paramotors a long long time ago maybe ten thousand years ago there was a paramotor but we didn't know about it i don't know Maybe not. Um, any other questions for Aaron before we uh, start closing down the podcast? 
Yes, I just want to th thanks, Aaron. I got to run, guys. It's always a pleasure. Hopefully, I'll thanks. be back more. Thanks, JT. Yeah, Don't good stay away you, so buddy. long, okay? What's that? Don't stay away so long. I know, I know. I'm going to be back. I know. Office. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know I miss you guys. I'm going through my, my withdrawal of my, my paramotor peeps. So I love you guys. <laughs> well, good to see you, JP. I have got a quick buddy. question. See you, JP. Got a quick question for Aaron about uh, U.S. pilots and how many he's taught or brought to so that they've gotten a Canadian document or maybe they didn't even go that far, but how many have you trained? Okay. Um, in the last uh, three years since opening up the school, and this is our third season, um, I think we've put through six in the last two years, and we have four registered right now for, for spring summer training at one of our schools across Canada. So not not a ton because again, um, we, we do, we do sell a bit. I'm not going to say into the U S because we have to, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Um, we have to honor our dealer agreements where we're not selling Canada into the U S and U S to Canada. Um, however, we've had some students that come up from the U S that do training that obviously we can sell gear to, and then they take, uh, their paramotor back with them. Um, and let's face it, the U.S. dollar is stronger for, for the Americans visiting Canada. It's a great vacation. And we get a lot of people from um, Montana, Idaho, Washington, some of the surrounding states um, that um, uh, versus, you know, them investing all the money to fly down to Aviator in Florida or have wait times or whatnot um, were pretty accessible during the summertime to get through the, the demand with any Americans coming up. Cool. Okay, and so real nine, quick, and real quick, can you, <laughs> and, and real quick, can you let the people know uh, what is your email uh, address? Bill H said that he hit the wrong button and didn't catch your email. Yep, for sure. It's uh, Aaron. It's A A Ron at PPG School. That's Papa Papa Golf School dot com. Awesome. Well, Aaron, thank you so very much for joining us tonight and hanging out with us, teaching us about uh, uh, the, the difference between what we do in the States and what you guys do up there in Canada. Um, very interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that we talked about this, knowing that if I want to, I can go up there, just bring a helmet and my wing and be able to go through your phase one get a couple of uh things going on i could fly it in canada that, that's that's awesome i did not know it's that easy and it really is easy con considering right yeah as long as you're just uh just demonstrating competency and most people that have helmets and wings and uh by even looking uh, uh call them creeping people's backgrounds when you see all of the flights that they're posting you know if they're in the sport or or if they're and or as soon as they have a wing in their hands you know that they're going to be competent or not uh when it comes to to allowing them to fly uh, but as long as they do that that 20 hours of classroom training and they have the valid medical and insurance we're able to write a student pilot permit and get people up in the air incredible incredible yeah it sounds like we might have to go up there and and hang out with you guys in canada and do a fly in and drink some Canadian beer and smell some Canadian money. Mm -mm -mm. Can't wait. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. It's all Bitcoin now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It seems like, uh, seems like all the governments are thinking about going digital currency and no more paper money, no more coins. You know, us like our Canadian where you're always welcome to come visit us because you know, us Canadians, we come down and visit you guys all the time. Absolutely. Um, anything that you want to leave us with, uh, Mr. Aaron, uh, words of wisdom or anything like that? Oh, just everybody fly, fly safe. And it's all about, uh, experiencing the world in a different way and building the community and, uh, yeah, just, Looking forward to meeting a lot of you guys on our travels. And again, you're welcome to come up to Canada anytime. Hit me up and I'll definitely hit you guys up when we're on our travels down down your way. I really awesome. appreciate the opportunity to, to get on the show. It's been a blast.
you bring a wing down to to my school and you can use uh, uh our motors and we can go fly around and i'll show you our neighborhood uh, as long as you're running trike because again i got my hip replacement on wednesday so i'm going to be restricted to trike for another season yet so <laughs> oh my goodness you know what uh, my uncle had his hip replaced but he was uh he was up and running around and had no problems within just a couple of weeks so uh, the technology yeah. seems to have changed a lot. You're you're going to be you know fully bionic. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again very much. I appreciate thank you, Aaron. You, Aaron. Uh, amazing information, and I can't wait to uh, chat with you maybe tomorrow or something like that. So, thank you very much, Miss Linda. If you want to be on the show, go to paramomusa.com. If it's over to Linda's facebook page just say hey i want to be on the show jim thank you very much for for bringing your instructor on tonight definitely appreciate that and thank you so much for helping us out with stickers and all these other wonderful things that you do over at your printing press at carepp.com and you're up to 118 you said flights on, on careppg.com you betcha awesome well thank you very much guys uh, we'll see you tomorrow over at ppg lear dot com. Good night. Peace out. Bye. Bye guys. Oops.